Linking them all together was the securitization food chain, a new system which connected trillions of dollars in mortgages and other loans with investors all over the world. 30 years ago, if you went to get a loan for a home, the person lending you the money expected you to pay him or her back. You got a loan from a lender who wanted you to pay him back. We've since developed securitization, whereby the people who make the loan are no longer at risk if there's a failure to repay. In the old system, when a homeowner paid their mortgage every month, the money went to their local lender. And since mortgages took decades to repay, lenders were careful. In the new system, lenders sold the mortgages to investment banks. The investment banks combined thousands of mortgages and other loans, including car loans, student loans, and credit card debt, to create complex derivatives called collateralized debt obligations, or CDOs. The investment banks then sold the CDOs to investors. Now when homeowners paid their mortgages, the money went to investors all over the world. The investment banks paid rating agencies to evaluate the CDOs, and many of them were given a triple A rating, which is the highest possible investment grade. This made CDOs popular with retirement funds, which could only purchase highly rated securities. This system was a ticking time bomb. Lenders didn't care anymore about whether a borrower could repay, so they started making riskier loans. The investment ratio between borrowed money and the bank's own money was called leverage. The more the banks borrowed, the higher their leverage. In 2004, Henry Paulson, the CEO of Goldman Sachs, helped lobby the Securities and Exchange Commission to relax limits on leverage, allowing the banks to sharply increase their borrowing. The SEC somehow decided to let investment banks gamble a lot more. That was nuts. I don't know why they did that, but they did that. Since credit default swaps were unregulated, AIG didn't have to put aside any money to cover potential losses. Instead, AIG paid its employees huge cash bonuses as soon as contracts were signed. But if the CDOs later went bad, AIG would be on the hook. People were essentially being rewarded for taking massive risks uh, in good times that generate short-term revenues and profits and therefore bonuses, but that's going to lead to the firm to be bankrupt over time. That's a totally distorted system of compensation. AIG's financial products division in London issued five... By purchasing credit default swaps from AIG, Goldman could bet against CDOs it didn't own and get paid when the CDOs failed. I asked if anybody called the customers and said, you know, we don't really like this kind of mortgage anymore, and we thought you ought to know. And, you know, they, they didn't really say anything, but, you know, you just feel the laughter coming over the phone. 